All right. So we talked about block ciphers. So now we know what the block cipher is and how it works. But uh, we always focused on uh, single blocks. So when we talked about block ciphers, we said that a block cipher works on a B bit block, generally 64 bits or 128 bits, and maps this B blocks, uh, this B bits to B bits. And we focused on, on that part and the design and the security. Now, uh, we need to consider uh, two things because two questions arises when you focus on block ciphers. And these are as follows. Since a block cipher works on blocks, how to encrypt plain takes longer than a single block, right? So, uh, we know, for instance, consider AES, we talked about it. So it has 128 bit blocks. So it maps 128 bit blocks to 128 bit blocks. But what happens when we have two blocks, 256 bits? So we have to answer this question. And the second question is that, how to encrypt a plain text whose length is not the multiple of the block size? So it can be less than a single block, like for instance, 13 bits, or it can be more than one block, but still not a multiple of the block size, like 305 bits, right? So these two questions arise, arise and we have to answer them. Let's look at our motivation for the first question, because a lot of people think that the following is the best thing to do. And this is actually called electronic codebook, ECB mode of operation. So it says that encrypt every plain text block independently, concatenate output blocks to form the cipher text. So you have a huge plain text. So you divide it into block sizes. So you have many plain text blocks from P0 to Pn. Then you uh, independently encrypt all of them with your secret key. The secret key is the same, of course, because you have a single secret key and you use it to encrypt everything. So this is the first thing that comes to the mind of everybody. And I learned that a lot of people in companies are using this method, but this is the worst thing that you can do, okay? This method is not acceptable because ECB maps same plain text blocks to same cipher text blocks. Attacker can capture information using the redundancy of the plain text. So if P1 and P2 are the same, then C1 and C2 are the same. And since we always assume that uh, the enemy captures the ciphertext because the communication channel is insecure, then they will see that C1 and C2 are identical. And from this info, they will know that P1 and P2 are identical and uh, they may uh, learn more about the plain text just from this information. So let me show you how this works. So in literature, people generally uh, show this using the uh, Penguin logo of Linux, but I will use our university's logo in this case. So this is a bitmap file, a BMP file. So it is a rectangle like this, okay? And as you can see, there are too many white pixels, a lot of white pixels here. And you know, since you have uh, white pixels next to each other, when you divide this uh, image into blocks, many white pixels will form a single uh, block for the encryption. So if you encrypt this using AES-128 in the ECB mode, this is what you get. So let's go back to the original picture, and this is the encrypted version. As you can see, we can even read the name of the university author. We can easily understand what the picture is all about. Okay, so you are using an encryption algorithm that, that is used by the whole world, actually. AES is responsible almost the whole encryption in the world right now. But due to bad choice of mode of operation, now everything leaks, okay? So this is for bitmap files, but depending on the file size, file type, sorry, if you convert it into pixels, you will understand what the file is doing actually. For instance, if you uh, encrypt an executable file in Windows, an exe file, then print it as if it is a bitmap image on the screen, then you will see some patterns 
And from those patterns, you can even understand where it is trying to access memory, okay? So this is why you can never use the ECB mode of operation. So in the another pic, uh, picture is our uh, logo of the laboratory. So this is a very low resolution image. As you can see, you can count the pixels from here. But even in this scenario, the encrypted version, actually, you can even read the side text from here. If you look at this one and this one, this is what happens. But even just looking at these parts, you can understand that the original uh, plain text is a bitmap file. OK, so this is unacceptable. So BMP files are good examples why ECB fails in practice. OK, this problem is not limited to BMP files. You can treat an encrypted file as if it is an image file and look at the pattern of the pixels to discover the type of the original file. So uh, you might ask, how am I going to treat it as an image file? So at the beginning of the encrypted image, you will just put information as if it is a bitmap file and you have to write the resolution, right? Of course, you don't know the original resolution, but uh, if I didn't know this one, so generally, actually, you don't know the size. Of course, in general, uh, from looking at the file size, you generally know what the image uh, resolution is. For bitmap, this is really easy. You can easily understand just by looking at the size of the file, you can say that this is a full HD image or you know uh, this many pixels times this many pixels and so on. But even if you write something wrong, so you will see some you know, uh, school image, which you will still uh, help you to understand the original resolution. So in this scenario, just uh, put a, a small information in the beginning of the file saying that it is a bitmap image and you know it, it has this resolution and so on, then you will see the pixels and understand what's happening in the original file. So as I just mentioned, for instance, exec executable files can be identified from the ciphertext because operations like memory accesses provide a distinct pattern in the image file. OK. So ECB mode can be used for implementation verification or benchmarking, but never for encryption or you know, real world use. OK, you cannot use that. This is very important. As I mentioned before, a lot of people in the world still thinks that ECB is a good mode of operation and they keep using it, OK, which they shouldn't. Again, I should read the warning. ECB mode should never be used for cryptographic purposes, OK? OK, uh, so an easy solution for this problem is to find a way to link plain text blocks because they were independently encrypted. So this is why same plain text blocks are mapped to same cipher text blocks. So we can get rid of this by somehow link linking plain text blocks to each other. For example, cipher block chaining mode, CBC mode as follows. So once you encrypt a plain text block, you obtain a cipher text block, but you also take this one and XOR with the next plain text block and so on. In order to have the symmetry, you start with an initialization vector. In this scenario, it is not a secret. It is written in the uh, standard, so you know this value. But it, this way, you know, if P1 and P2 are the same, now C1 and C2 will be different. So we solved the problem, but now we introduced another problem. The ECB mode was parallelizable because we can we could encrypt P0 and P2 at the same time when we were using ECB. Now, I, in order to encrypt P2, I should have this value. But in order to have it, I should have this encryption performed. But in order to have this encryption, I should need to see zero value and so on. So this is a serial. Uh, encryption mode of operation, you cannot parallelize it. So this is why in the mode of operation, we will talk about many types of mode of operations and what kind of advantages and disadvantages each mode of operation has. Okay. Finally, let's talk about the motivation for our second question. Uh, we asked that what happens if the plain text is not a multiple of the block size B? For instance, if your block size 64 bits, 
consider encrypting you know 37 bits or 102 bits and so on. so the first thing that comes to mind is to fill the remaining bits with zeros right so this is the easiest thing you can do that, but the problem is that the last bits of zero of the last block may belong to the plain text or some of them may be from the padding so then this introduces an ambiguity so let me show this with an example consider the 64 bit block like this in hexadecimal format so last byte is zero now last byte is zero but the person who is going to decrypt this block cannot be sure if this last zeros uh sorry when this of course this is the plain text sorry so the person who decrypts the block and obtains this plain text now have to decide if the last byte is from the padding or it is from the original plain text so this introduces an ambiguity so for the last bits if they are zero you will never be sure if it comes from the padding or not and you know bad paddings always uh, introduces uh, cryptanalysis so you have to be very careful about this padding so we call uh, it padding when you fill the remaining part with some bits so we will uh, answer this question uh, in the next uh, part <laughs>